get out of that baby. You can't take a chance on small arms or what have you. You don't want to burn up in it. You get out of that tank, if it gets hit, come out the top, as I did. You are about to embark upon the great crusade to meet this mounting aggression. And make no mistake about it, good will prevail. Well, there was a war on, and uh, I'd been in military school. My mother had to do something with me. I come from a broken family and all that business. I was somewhat of a problem in high school. I guess my motivation was a desire to serve. And uh, I was a little disturbed that the Navy had turned me down, but I didn't lose any sleep over it. Said that I physically didn't look like I could make it or something. I wasn't worried about the Army. They knew if I was breathing, I would be all right and I was looking forward to being part of the invasion. I wasn't really, it was D plus 10 when I landed. I suddenly realized that uh, when I landed at Normandy in uh, World War II, that this was the real McCoy. I landed with a small packet. We called ourselves the Dirty 30. We stayed until we were assigned to units. I ultimately went to a cavalry regiment and fought with them through World War II. Well, I was assistant driver, and I asked uh, the big Dutchman that sat next to me, this was an Iowa National Guard unit. They had been together for a year when they were activated, been in England for some time. He was from Iowa. The gunner was, he's either called Fatso or Fat Boy. I would think the tank commander, his name was Russian because of his name, Markowski. Chris Broquet was kind of like a father to all of us. He would, he kind of helped me get squared away. Ultimately, I, uh, you know, I went to the end with them. Uh, ended up in, in the Elbe River. I uh, had some unfortunate uh, accidents along the way. I ran into some Germans and so forth. Most memorable is uh, the lessons we learned. When one tank was hit, let me tell you, to get out of that tank, if it gets hit, come out the top, as I did. Of course, uh, what they had to do, the sequence was ridiculous. The assistant driver would have to turn around and get this, undo the hatch and drop it down in the bottom of the tank. Then he would crawl out through that hole and so forth and go there. And once the tank commander came down, came down his slot, he went, he would wind up over here in the middle of the tank. He'd come down and have to go out through the tank and so forth. The driver had to go up into the gunner compartment, under the tank uh, gun, over here and out, and you can imagine, by that tank, the tank would have been, get out of that baby. You can't uh, take a chance on small arms or what have you. You don't want to burn up in it or blow up or whatever. Good advice, and uh, also the fellow had the pistol belt on and got caught, and we couldn't get him out of the, troops couldn't get him out of the assistant driver's seat. He, he burned up the tank. Magdeburg had all of already fallen, and uh, we uh, joined the Russians up there. Our sister squadron met them after relieving us. We weren't sure of them to, uh, completely, and uh, you know what do I know? I'm a, I'm just now a brand new tank commander with no tank. We had some action when I got my end, I finally got an M24 tank, and we opened up a. Uh, a camp, which was tragedy, what it was. These people weren't the ones that they cremated. These are people that were perhaps waiting for something. And they were a displaced person camp is what it was. Soon, uh, those of us didn't have enough points. I had about 70 points. I had a point schedule to get people to go home. Believe it or not, we're considered to be go to Japan, that we had left the outfit before they they came home as a unit, 85 points or more, and they filled up with those of us who left them. And we were going to, were scheduled, supposedly, that uh, we would be heading uh, to Japan. 
We said, you got to be kidding. One more is enough. We finally left uh, Germany and uh, came home in the 44, first part of 45. In Korea, I went over there in 52 as a second lieutenant. I had volunteered for that. And I joined the 65th Infantry, was part of the 3rd Division. I ultimately had a, took a uh, tank platoon and a rifle company later on, and ultimately became the officer that I wanted to be, is down there in the rifle company, so I could close with and kill or capture the enemy. When I went up to Chorwan, and I became part and parcel of the uh, 7th, 7th Cavalry uh, Battalion uh, or Regiment, commanded by Lloyd Wills, a very fine soldier that used me as his uh, counterattacking force in the valley. And so I went up there and shot up the valley. I hope I got a few casualties on the other side and so forth. So I was quite active up there. And I told him, I said, someday I want to get to an infantry company. And Lloyd Wills told me, uh, you come back to this regiment, I'll give you a rifle company. Don't worry about it. And I did, ultimately, when I was when I went over there, he had already gone, but the, the fellow that took over from him uh, remembered what he said, and I did get my rifle company. In Vietnam, that was uh, something I volunteered to go. Went over there into a liaison group. The purpose was to work with the regiments and provide their logistical support. And they fought well. And uh, I got something called the In Hun, which was for gallantry and action given to me by the commander. I was chosen to be the deputy commander of the organization under John R. D. Cleland, now a retired general living in Melbourne, Florida, a three-war person like me. Fine soldier. He had jumped into Korea and so forth, 187. And we had a swath of terrain. We had the Task Force South was formed up by a battalion of the 506th, and as was the 503rd, famous for operations in the Pacific. And the 23rd Armored Division. We speculated that it was a transitional organization to lead us into Vietnamization that was coming up, turning it over to the Vietnamese and so on. I served 27 years, all of which was valued. I think World War II gave me the sense of discipline and of growing up because I was a high school malcontent, as I mentioned earlier. I was proud to serve my country and grow up. I would say probably that was the best life's teacher.